welcome to the third video of series where i am discussing the last year questions for wbpac estate engineer examination 2020 okay before studying today's video i would like to make an announcement that is related to your mock test okay lots of coaching institute like xyz abc they are offering you the mock test series where there will be 14 to 20 test on different subject and they are on an average charging you like 1500 rupees okay so if you find this is hard for you the paying this 1500 rupees for joining any mock test there is a website which is completely free and offering you over more than 50,000 mcq questions okay and the website is your www.sunfoundry.com okay if you go there and you will get more than 50,000 mcq question based on uh, different examination and also covered completely all the topics for different subjects okay so if you find to join this coaching or join this mock test costly you can go there to this website which is completely free okay so let's start today's video today's questions are mainly based on soil mechanics and your survey okay so what is the first question first question is your the question is if a sample of dry sand tested in a direct shear test okay gives failure shear stress as 100 kilonewton at a normal stress of 200 kilonewton then you have to find the angle of internal friction okay so for direct shear stress you know let's say this is your normal stress and this is your shear stress in direct shear stress you plot the normal stress and corresponding failure shear stress like this okay then you join this line okay and the slope of this line gives you the internal friction for your sand okay that is phi so here to find the slope what is the value so pick up any point and corresponding to the point your sigma is given that is your normal stress is 200 so base is 200 and the shear stress is given as 100 so this is 100 so slope or internal friction phi is simply tan phi is equal to 100 by 200 so you are getting internal friction phi as 10 inverse 1 by 2 okay so this is the correct answer option d next question is soil again a question from soil mechanics a soil has a bulk density that is your gamma bulk okay and this is given as 1.8 gram per centimeter cube at water content of 5 percent so w is equal to 0 0.05 and if the void ratio remains constant then its bulk density for water content of 10 percent will be how much so you have to find gamma bulk is how much for given what content is equal to 0 0.10 if you draw the phase relation it will be look like this this is your solid and this is your void ratio okay so let's say the solid is your w is weight of solid and this is void ratio and the water content w w is given as weight of water divided by weight of solid okay so initially for case one what is the weight of water simply this is your weight of water is equal to water content 0 0.05 times weight of solid so for case one what is the total weight wt that is weight of solid plus weight of water that is 1.05 times w is okay let's say total volume is constant that is your unit or one okay now for second case 
in second case the void ratio remains constant that means the total void total volume is same that is unit and the soil solid particle is constant remains same ws only the change is in water content now the water content is this much okay so what is the change in water present weight of water is equal to your water content now let's say this is dashed time weight of solid that is 1 point so sorry 0 0.1 times ws so for case 2 total weight become your 1.1 times weight of solid now density your bulk density gamma is your weight divided by total volume okay and this is given as 1.8 for case 1 initially or we can say that the volume is which we have assumed unit it is actually w by 1.8 where w is 1.05 w s okay so our assumption that the total volume unit it is not actually correct let's assume the total unit is v okay in second case also this remains v so b is 1.05 times w s by 1.8 okay so in second case what is the bulk density gamma bulk it is coming as total weight w t this one divided by volume we have already calculated this so w t is 1.1 w s and volume is 1.05 w s into 1.8 okay so you are getting near about 1.88 almost so b is the correct option you can check yourself in your calculator but better try to calculate your by your hand okay now move to the next question i know and i apologize for that the quality of the snap is very poor well let me read it out height of the instrument may be defined height of instrument so this is a question from your survey okay this is a question from survey okay so what is height of instrument well let's say it's a ground and you are given a task to find the reduced level of this ground at different point so what you do you have to set up your theodolite or total station whatever and when you observe something let's say you have to measure the RL of this point so simply you put a stuff here where the readings are marked like this this is the stuff and you read a reading corresponding to the line of collimination okay collimination and the height of this line of collimination corresponding to any fixed point let's say here you have a fixed benchmark the fixed known point is known as benchmark okay and corresponding to this benchmark let's say you know the top of this benchmark is 100 meter above the sea level then you can measure this height of the line of collimination let's say this is 2.05 so the height of this instrument is now 100 plus 2.05 so what is the definition of height of instrument this is the height of the instrument at the time of observation actually it is not completed let's read out other option the elevation of the plane of collimination well this is the correct this should be correct the elevation of the plane of collimination collimation when the instrument is accurately labeled so option b is correct when you have labeled your total station or theodolite properly then this line of collimination 
or the plane of collimation is known as height of instrument what is the next question the next question is the bearing capacity so this is related to your soil soil mechanics okay the question is the bearing capacity of a strip footing resting on a saturated clay so key point is clay and strip footing okay now what is the question clay is 120 kN per meter square the bearing capacity of a circular footing with diameter same as the width of strip footing resting on same soil will be more than 120 equal to 120 less than 120 or any of the above okay so let's say this was your strip footing with width b and you know as per Tarjagi, the equation for bearing capacity is given as q ultimate that is c n c plus gamma t f overburden pressure times n q plus 0 0.5 times n gamma times gamma b okay and this equation is valid for strip footing okay but when you have to calculate the bearing capacity for circular footing this q ultimate for circular footing for circular footing becomes 1.3 times c in c plus gamma tf remains same in q and this term becomes 0 0.3 in gamma gamma times b okay and if the soil is clay so it's a cohesive soil where your cohesion or c is the dominant dominating property we can neglect the other terms okay so if we compare only these two terms here we can see that for circular footing with same size this has been magnified by almost 30 percent so of course the bearing capacity will be more than 120 kilometers per meter square now next question right deflection angle may be directly obtained by setting the instrument to read well the right deflection angle means the question is associated with your survey survey okay so today's questions are mainly from soil mechanics and survey so what is right deflection angle well let's say you are traversing something so let's say this is point a this is point b this is point c so first you set up your instrument here you look at point p and join line b so a b is known to you now again you shift the instrument here you look at point c then join b c okay so what is right deflection angle let's say you work like this in straight line now it's okay now suddenly you deflect at your right with some angle from the original path so this angle is known as right deflection so here if I say what is the right deflection angle for BC of course the angle is represented by this one this is the right deflection angle okay this is original path of AB but C has deviated by theta degree at the right side if you walk in this direction so this is the concept of right deflection angle okay and to measure this right deflection angle suppose you are traversing with your theodolite okay so what you have to do well simply to measure this you set up your theodolite here this is your theodolite okay you simply rotate this 180 degree initially you was looking at this point okay so if you rotate your telescope by 180 degree towards back station that is point a so now you lock your vernier at this point 
So first you rotate anticlockwise 180 degree towards the back station. Now you rotate your telescope with locking your vernier. Then you mark your next station C. So you will directly get theta. So what is the option? Right deflection angles may be directly obtained by setting instrument 0 on back station. No. 180 degree on back station. Yes. Not 90 degree, not 270 degree. Okay. Now next question. Two specimen of clay A and B. Again question from soil mechanics. Are tested in a consolidation apparatus with MV, CV all are given and you have been asked to find the ratio of ka and kb well k here represent the permeability and you know the permeability of any soil can be directly expressed by using mv and cv with multiplied with gamma w okay so it's a direct formula based question so ka by kb is simply mv cv of soil a gamma w divided by mv cv of soil b multiplied with gamma w and cancel out gamma w so you are getting mv cv mv is 3.6 times 10 to the power minus 4 into cv is 3.8 into 10 to the power minus 4 divided by mv for b soil b 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 4 into cv for soil b that is 1.9 into 10 to the power 4 here you can observe the values are arranged in such a manner that they can be calculated by your hand only okay so cancel each of them this is 2 this is 2 so simply 4 and yes there is option d the ratio of permeability of soil A and B is 4. Okay. So move to next question. What is this? Closed contours. Again question from surveying. And the chapter is related to your contours. Closed contours with higher value inwards. So there are two key words. First one is the contour is closed. And second one is the higher value at inward side higher value inward so the contour will look like this let's say this is the closed contours okay and higher value inward means let's say this is your 500 meter this represent 400 meters this represent 300 meters this represent 100 meters like this okay so if we draw the actual it will be looks like this these points are at 100 meter let's say the elevations are taking positive at upward and this are at 300 so at quite higher side this is also 500 sorry this is 400 and this one is your 500 so now if you connect all of them in elevation it will look like this so it's simply one type of hill okay so what are the op options first one is depression not at all plane surface not at all none of the above well second one is hillock so obviously this represent a hillock okay next move to next question well if the rl of a benchmark is 100 so this is also from serving the back side is 1.215 meter and the fore side is 1.870 and the rl of the forward station so lots of concepts are associated with this question first one is reduced level you know this is measured with respect to your c level okay so the reduced level of this point with respect to this C level is known as RL. Okay. And next is benchmark. Obviously, uh, already I have discussed what is benchmark. That means the RL of a point which is 
already established or already well defined okay so benchmark next is back site back site foresight forward station backward station so let's say this is a ground okay and here you have set up your third light somewhere here so when you look forward okay so this is let's say you are looking forward so this is foresight now here is a benchmark where you have already taken the reading to measure the height of instrument okay so this is now become back sight when you are looking at this direction and the reading of a pm this is the benchmark now and the rl of the benchmark is 100 meter it is given to you okay so reading was how much 1.215 so this reading is 1.215 so what is the total height of instrument so height of instrument become 100 plus 1.215 meter okay this is the height of this instrument and you are taking a reading on a point okay this is the forward station and the reading here is given 1.870 so here staff reading is 1.870 meter so what is the rl well to find the rl reduce level of this for forward station you have to come down from this line towards this point okay by magnitude of 1.870 okay so you are getting a value of 100 minus 5 and this is 2 5 this is also 5 okay sorry this is not 5 this is 6 this is 6 0 and you are getting 99 point something let's look at the options yes there is a single option related to your 99 value so you need not to calculate any further option a is the correct answer now next question this is the ninth question and it says i am discussing mainly 10 question total so you have only two more questions so here question is if the foresight of line ab is 35 again related to surveying okay so if the foresight of line ab is 35 degree and that of line bc is 15 degree so it's a question related to your bearing so let's say this is the north okay so you have line 35 degree this is 35 degree this is a this is b okay and the line bc makes the same angle 15 degree so foresight again you have to measure from north so it was your previous line Okay, so on my green color now new line is your this one and this angle is your 15 degree you have to measure the included angle so what is the included angle included angle is this one this is the included angle so the total angle this was this was your 180 degree okay and what is this angle well initially it was 35 degree and now it is 15 degree so it becomes 20 degree so this line is 20 degree away from the original one so the included angle this one is simply 180 degree minus 20 degree so you are getting included angle as 160 degree let's look into the options yes option c is correct and now the last questions what is taylor stability number okay 
so this question is from soil mechanics taylor stability number well the concept of taylor stability number is like this let's say you have built up an embankment like this okay and let's say it consists of clay soil that means where question is the major property obviously this embankment will tend to slip like this okay it will try to come down by this slip surface but what happens the cohesion here which represent within this soil resist this downward motion okay so let's say the cohesion is c and we reduced it by factor of safety with c divided by factor of safety for cohesion so this is the cohesion which is acting actually okay and this is resisting the motion now what is the total weight which is trying to or which is trying to bring down these soils this is the weight of this wedge and it is your this is the weight which is proportional to the height of this embankment times the unit weight of soil that is gamma okay so the acting force is your gamma h so taylor saying that the stability number is in can be represented by the resisting force that is c by fc divided by the acting force that is h times gamma okay so what is taylor stability number it is represented by c divided by f times gamma h well though the options are not clearly visible for you here the option c is correct that's all for now